Hi and welcome to the channel. I'm Sam and this is a Crafty Blinder van build. Today's video I'm going to show you how to strip out the front end of your van. We're going to do some upgrades and we need it done. But a cheeky little plug first. Guess what? If you want one of these t-shirts they're now available from Vandetta. I'll put a link in the description below and guess what? They've even started making hoodies. <laughs> So if you want one, look in the description below. Hi, welcome back to the channel. We are continuing with our lighting upgrade. And now we're going to start on the front end of the van. Probably where I should have started in the beginning. But um, for me, reversing up and down the drive was a bit of an issue. So I uh, needed the lights on the back first. I wish to God I'd done it a lot sooner. Um, <laughs> it's a game changer. It has literally made it so much easier reversing up and down this drive but anyway today we are gonna take out the lights I've already started taking out the trim so I'll show you how I did that but we're gonna take out the lights and take off the grill I'm taking my panel out there that is pretty tricky um, but I'll show you how to do it the easy way once you've got that off it's just a matter of removing the grills there's two hole, two fixings there four along the top two fixings that side and then we'll be on to taking the lights out. And what we're going to do is, while I've got this front end stripped out, I'm going to change the cam belt. I'm going to put a new condenser radiator on there because I think that's the point where my van has failed with its AC. We charged it up a couple of times last, last year. You know, 160 quid worth of gas, just gone. We did a pressure check on it. We don't know what's happening, um, but gas is definitely leaking out the system. So you always pressure check it. We even put leak test in the last second time. We leak tested it and straight away it started showing up on the condenser. So I think the hairline cracks that are opening up while we're driving um, through vibration so and heat. So we'll get that replaced while we're in there, get it regassed. Um, we're gonna change the timing belt. Lands up to 84,000 miles now, it's still on the original belt. Um, there was a service package come with it from uh, Mercedes, so we didn't utilise all that. Lockdown come along, scuppered the last two services, and I've not really been back in touch with them to see if, if they've extended the service period or not. So, not to maybe sure what I should do. But while we're here, we'll do an oil change, a filter change, a diesel filter change, and a HEP filter change as well. So, what else we're going to do while we're here? Oh yeah. We're going to put some very different spotlights on, but that's for another video. So while I'm in there, I'm going to put the looms in. I'm going to put two looms in, um, ready for the light upgrade for the front. Oh, I've got my hand in the way there. Yeah. We'll, uh, we're going to put two looms in, and that's why we're stripping all this front end out. Once we've got them looms in, we can mount the light in. So there's work to do on the dashboard. There's work to do under the bonnet. I'm just going to make the most of while I've got this front end stripped out. Let's get on with it. These are the clips we need to remove. Actually four of them, all the way along the bottom. All I'm using here is a little tack remover. That gets that out of there. So how these work is basically that pin sits in there, it pushes in and it pushes these out. Now if you ever get one of these that's stuck and you can't get it out, cut the head off and push it through. You'll have to buy a new one but at least you'll get it off without damaging whatever's holding it in. The pins are located on the front of your van where the step is. If you look underneath and up, you'll see these four pins. if you can see in there but let's just have a look in there there's a bit of a twig 
and there's a bit of plastic and then as you come up there's a gap and then plas oop, plastic again so what we're using radio key and we just need to pop that to be tight but that needs to just sit in the side there as this panel comes around on the top it tapers in on the end and I believe this is where we're meant to put our first piece in see how it popped there that's the start of it so we just need to work our way along and then you see there it's come out quite a way we get to this piece here now this piece is actually still fastened to the van this piece of this metal trim isn't so we need to coax these apart so we just need to be careful separating these two pieces There you go, that's, that's the start of it. Now that, we'll go and do the other side. That is it, basically started. So as you look in here, you can actually see this trim that it sits on, that it clips into. So now we've got that separated, we can move on to the other side. Once you've freed up both ends, it's just a matter of giving it a bit of a good tug and it will come away. Okay, let me show you what I was talking about right at the very beginning. So I said there's a piece of plastic in, in between the trim, just below the light. That there is where I push the radio key and basically that just pushes that end back and allows the panel to come away. There's two guides, a top and bottom guide, that lets this metal trim sit on. Let me show you the other end of that trim. And this, this is the end of the trim. So there's a few marks on there from where I've put the keys in previously. Um, you could probably get a plastic tool thin enough, I would say, to go down that edge. But um, for me, I don't take this off very often. So using a radio key and making sure that I haven't bared any metal should be should be good enough. If you do bear any metal, just treat it and cover it back up. So right in the very back of there, we have a screw, and that's what we need to get out now. So you see that? So there's the first one, and the second one. This is hard to show you. So the second one is quite a way back there, right at the very back. So there you go. Try to try to show you it and get a bit. Of, I need some light on it as well. I expect you to come out with one piece of that. I thought it would come out with the grill. No, no, no. This is all separate. This. Then, please. Yeah, you're good. Just in. I'm all right now. Thank you. Oh, that's so far away. That. Need an extension piece. So these two torque screws that are located right at the very back had basically seized themselves in. I spent so much time trying to free them up, trying to loosen them off. This side actually broke in the housing because it was that corroded. We eventually did get it off, but the other side we wasted nearly 40 minutes trying to get it off. 
took it out of there. Ready? Yep. My oldest boy, Sam's here today, giving us a bit of help and lots of friendly, helpful advice. <laughs> and he shouts at me too. Listen out for that, he shouts at me. In the end, we had to resort to some good old bodgery. A pair of mole grips on this drive handle and lots of brute force. Just, it was the only way we could get it off in the end. It was so tight, it was so seized. It just took, well, it took ages to get out. There's my mini meat beep. <laughs> so today we're going to remove the headlight, there's four bolts holding that in. We're also going to upgrade the horn. This horn is embarrassingly quiet. You know, a van of this stature and it's Meep meep. Very embarrassing. Go and press the on, son. See what it sounds like. Ooh. Ignition. <laughs> That's got to go. The original wiring was only set up for one horn. As we're going to put dual horns in, we need to modify the original wiring. That's what we're doing here. So we're going further. <clears throat> Let me tell you which is positive and which <laughs> If you look at it, I believe from what I understood, that's your positive. Mm. That's your, your earth, you could say, unless you make it. <clears throat> Don't press it. Go on. Again. Again. Much better. That's only one. You see, put it like that. Uh, yeah. In a washer. Hmm? In a washer, right? No, uh, it's come. It's a shouldered one, isn't it? So. No, I wouldn't have it touching, lads. I'm not. I'm not gonna. Yeah. <laughs> Problem I've got is, Sam, I'm limited by to where it can go. You know what I mean? Maybe take them out and drill a hole a bit closer together. Eh? Maybe tap another hole for it. You're not meant to have them upside down like that. No, That's I'd have it sideways. Stacked on top of each other, but they could do with being a little bit closer, right? Yeah, I agree with you. I think. Have you, have you got another? I found the bolt. Uh, found the bolt. We lost control. But I've not found the bolt. Was just lost. I've got is I've got to make sure the grill goes back on. Yeah. 
you've got to make sure the grill goes back on. Throughout the day, I dropped multiple nuts, bolts and washers into this area. So it was time to go fishing. Because I hadn't done my homework, we're wasting time, we're losing time. I basically thought this would be a like for like swap, and it isn't. We're trying to fit two horns into the location of one, and it just isn't going to work. Just come up backwards. Feed them in from the back and then. Yeah, but that's only going to give you a couple of mil. No, no, I'm talking about flip them round so you're mounting them, so they're sitting in that recess and then they're mounting on there. You've got to remember there's only this little pocket here to mount them in. Yeah. So, that's what I'm saying, put, put them in there. Well, it might be, I'll take that off and put it down here, drill a hole through there and mount them on sideways. Yeah. How? Will one of them sit? If you took that off, will it sit in that gap and still touch that? We just didn't know where to mount them, to be honest. I don't know. I don't know Let us show you. Take it off. No, it no just take, take it off at the thing. Hey. Leave that blanket hey. on. You should have shot them, mate. <laughs> they are quite big, like, yes, I don't know if they will, but you might be able to just pull the bracket out of it. In the end, we come to a bit of a compromise. There was no fighting. Okay. Right. There should be much louder. Oh. Not the camera. Again. I think I think that's a definite improvement. <laughs> Don't you? Final check. Help. Right, let's. You pass. No. No. Just bring it back. Let I think what we have to do is lift it up. I'm not trying to put it in. It doesn't matter where we position it or how we offer it up, they're just too big, they're just not going to fit. That's where it wants to be, yeah? Yeah. So, where we thought the big gap was. It's, only, it's like a seam, isn't it? Check that. Wants to be much higher there. Eh? Why don't you just take it down? Take it down behind the bumper into this cavity. There's a bit that that goes down there as well, isn't there? Yeah, it's on the same 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 line though, huh? So as long as you either or there is. It looks to be a bit down here. I don't know if it's gonna fall for me. Yeah, as long as you avoid that line, that's where your thing comes down. It sits on that line there, right? so.
To remove the light, we've got four torque 30s. So there's one there, one here, one there, and one over in the bottom there. So we'll get them lights whipped out. Gracias, amigo. I'll put this... Uh, I'll leave that to you. Yeah. What's that? This is 25. I'm gonna have to bounce, huh? Yeah, yeah. Yes, guy, I'm getting some lunch, so I'll get a couple of baskets. Yep, no problem, sir. So, this is a new resting place for the horns. As you seen before, when we tried to install it in the original place, it wouldn't fit. Part of the rear of the grill actually made contact with it. So, we just pulled the cable back off its two mountain points, there and there, and we've stuck them back on down here. I don't know if I can get that one on, but we will secure that up there. There you go. So that's it, we used the original bracket, we bolted it on, twisted it, and uh, just popped them in there nicely. Now if I change my mind and I want fog lights in there, I'm knackered. So if I do put fog lights in, there'll be LEDs <laughs> that will bolt on the outside. I am not pissing about changing that one again. And then... <coughs> Excuse me. Anyway, that's a good job done. Now we've got to go and get all them bolts and nuts from underneath that have dropped down into this cavity here. Just might pull on a couple of pins and that'll do it. Well, we haven't finished that job. We've got that one done. We've got the uh, got this tripod out of the way. Got the wheel painted up. Wait for the wheel hanger come in. <laughs> Make to throw everything in quickly. So yeah, lights are down there. They need to go back in. Grill needs to go back on. Their jobs for another day. <sighs> well, that's all the hard work done. We're in a good position now to start all the other jobs. Um, just waiting for a couple of parts to arrive. I've actually got to go out now pick up the timing belt, pick up the condenser. Spotlights arrived, looms have arrived. Um, what are we waiting for? Oh yeah, lamps have come. Um, what else are we waiting for? There's something else we're waiting for. Switches, that's it, switches. I'm gonna put some nice dashboard switches on, something a bit different, you know. Um, I don't like some of these little switches that are out there. So I've got some that have, they're just off eBay, but. I've got some that have like uh, roof lights and um, spot lamps and stuff like that on it. And while we're in there doing that work, we're going to look at putting a an override switch in for the reversing lights, just in case we pitch up somewhere. We want a bit of light on the back, but I, you know, maybe got the engine running or something like that. Just another way of utilising the lights that I've already got. So that's where we're going to be over the next few weeks. We're going to be doing all this front end work. And then, the van might be finished, but we'll see, we'll see, there's always other jobs. Thanks for watching, see you again. The Crafty Blinder t-shirts that we had made for the competition are now available from Vandetta. I'll put a link in the description below, and they've also started making hoodies, and the hoodies are awesome. I love mine. <laughs>